Um, I hope you're enjoying the day so far. We are going to now continue. Ladies, you can take yourselves off mute now if you would like to, just so that you're ready. It gives me great pleasure to um, introduce both Lisa and Karina Carvel. And I think I've just said that wrong on the way you are on the screen. It's Karina and Lisa, isn't it? It's Karina oh, yeah. first and then Lisa. Uh, Karina and Lisa Carvel, um, <laughs> who are going to be leading the uh, next session for us on dietary management. Lisa and Karina, between them, uh, a work for consensus between them have over 30 years of experience of dietary management in PWS. So please do sit back and enjoy. As always, please use the question and answer box we won't I won't be able to see them I'm not keeping an eye on the chat box so I won't be able to see any questions that go in there if you can put your questions into um, the question and answer box ladies are you happy to be interrupted as you go along or would you rather do the presentation and then take questions um you can interrupt us as we go along I think that's beautiful. fine yeah beautiful um if we have the opportunity I will invite people in to ask you if they're comfortable to do so if not I'll ask you on their behalf and are you happy for me to email any questions to you afterwards yeah you no don't problem. get time to answer no perfect problem. if you could just put your slideshow onto the full presentation for me that would be amazing yeah if I can get to it because it's <laughs> that's uh, yeah it's a bit slow your mouse isn't it I can see there we go yeah that should come up and then just from current slide, that would be amazing. Yeah. And then people would be able to see it. Thank you very much indeed, ladies. I will hand over to you. Okay, thank you. So hopefully everybody can see our slides as they come up. Um, just to introduce ourselves for those that don't know us, um, we're sisters. <laughs> and um, my sister, Lisa, is a service manager in one of our consensus PWS services. And myself, I did manage services for many, many years, but now I'm a specialist trainer for Consensus, and I specialise in Prada Willy Syndrome training and menu planning. So us as a company, we provide tailored support in residential and supported living services for people with learning disabilities, autism, complex needs, and obviously Prada Willy Syndrome as well. We, as Patsy said, we've worked um, with individuals for many, many years, probably combined, coming up to 40 years 40 and over years. now. Um, but we are very passionate about enabling the individuals we support to live a meaningful, fulfilling life with the opportunity, choice and success that is granted to everybody. OK. So what we're going to look at today is... Let's look at diets, why we use a specific dietary management, which is calorie counting, how you can calculate those daily calorie intakes, how we increase daily calorie intake as well. We're going to look at some calorie surprises. My sister's going to discuss through that. And then we're going to just talk about the importance of exercise. So firstly, blank screen, so many diets have been out there. You know, it's, it can get really sort of confusing about what the right diet is. So we'll all have seen these in the past. The Atkins diet, you know, that low carb diet, the Cambridge diet. Oh, I remember that from years ago. Awful, just fluids. Slim fast, again, replacing meals with milkshakes. You know, the Mediterranean diet as well, you know, again, eating a lot of fruits and vegetables and things like that, which is good. And then things like the, the ketone diet as well. And of course, all of these things can cause us a lot of confusion as what is the right thing for our individuals. So some of our individuals will have um, attend weight loss uh, organisations, things like Weight Watchers, Slimming World, but they're not always ideal for people with PWS because of, you know, the nature of the diet plan that you're on. There can be, you know, amounts of food that are classed as free or unlimited on certain days. And as we know, an individual may take this a wee bit too literally. <clears throat> excuse me however we are aware that some people find that that form of dietary management suits them and with support it, it can be successful so
So what do we look at when we're considering how to support somebody with PWS? Do we just look at the fats in a diet, you know, low fat diet? Well, of course, everybody wants that. We all know that that is suitable to help weight loss. But then do we need to look at things like sugars as well? Do we look at things like the carbohydrates? You know, going back to that Atkins diet, do we prevent a lot of carbohydrates? Do we have to focus in on the protein side of the diet as well? And it can all just be a little bit too confusing. Very confusing. Very confusing. And we need to make this as simple as possible. If you've got groups of different supporters, carers, families, family members, all managing and supporting an individual with their dietary management, it can get absolutely confusing. So we choose the calorie counting method of dietary management. And this is for a few reasons. Firstly, it's simple and it's easy for everybody to, to uh, work towards. It limits guesswork. What it does is it includes all those issues. So the fats, the um, sugars, the protein, the carbohydrates. In the calorie count of that product, it takes into consideration all those things. So it kind of takes it away from us. So we know if something is high in calories, it's going to be high in fats, sugars or carbohydrates. So it's done that business for us. And we really do believe that when we're putting menus together for people with PWS, it's really important that they have the variety of foods, you know, not just focusing on healthy food. We know that our guys need to have that sweet fix. So providing puddings and desserts and snacks and treats, because if we don't incorporate that into their diet, then there could be a chance that they may try and get that product from elsewhere. And anybody who's been on a diet knows that if you do, if you, you keep to the same things all the time, it becomes boring. So it needs to be interesting and that variety that Prima talked about. It's also logical for those who may have understanding difficulties. And we found over the years that our individuals that we support in services will focus better on calories rather than any other form. So if they know that they have, for example, to lose weight, say 1200 calories a day, they can work out that themselves. Some may need a lot of support around that, but others can more or less work out their cal calorie intake themselves. And let's face it, a lot of our individuals have been dealing with this a lot longer than what we have. So if they are capable, then it's good for them to start to learn about menu planning and what calorie intake and what calories and that um, they can have, basically. And the information about calories is accessible in so many different ways now. This morning, I asked my Alexa how many calories was in a, in a Kit Kat. So it's there, social media, you can put it into the internet, how many calories is this? And we know a lot of people with PWS, PWS yeah. sorry, can, are very good on their computers and things. So that's a way for them to learn as well. That's it, definitely. Calories are so easy to track. Every product now has calories on it if it's sold as, as a legal requirement. And that, but of course, there's always fresh things that we may have to, like Lisa said, you know, Alexa, how many calories are in an apple? Oh, mine nearly started then. Oh, <laughs> I said that too loud. It nearly... Alexa, stop. <laughs> She's stopping now. Oh, what's the to her name? So, calories are easy to track. They're easy to track for the individuals and they're easy to track for us and supporters and family, family members. Another thing is that daily calorie intake can be easily worked out. And there's a lot of professionals that have come up with these 
uh, certain ways to do this. So again, we only offer this as a guide. If an individual or you know your your child has support from a GP or dietitian, then obviously we would follow their advice. But of course, seeing a dietitian isn't always easy, and especially for our adults with PWS. So this can be a little bit of a guide for people. So we would look at obviously children is very different, and if you are sorting out daily calorie intake for a child it's very important that you get the professionals involved because obviously with pws there can be issues with growth and obviously you know we need somebody specialized to to maybe look at that diet in that way do i jump in very quickly go please do sorry, sorry. <coughs> um the where, where you're saying about it's being a guide and that if you're seeing a dietitian you would follow their advice yes. yeah do most in your experience do most dietitians that are not specialized in pws would they still recommend the um 2000 or 2200 calorie intake in which case would that be too much for someone with pws given that they need to have around 60 percent of the calories i think it's very important that any dietitian that sees an individual with PWS has a prior understanding of it. Because, yeah, I agree. Yeah, we have a lot of individuals that refuse to work with dietitians straight yeah. off yeah. the back because of maybe mistakes that they've made with them in the past because of their lack of understanding of PWS. Because we have quite a lot of PWS individuals living in our local area, we do have the benefit that uh, our local dietitian is quite aware of Prada Wilson yeah. syndrome. Yeah, and, and I think it makes a big difference, it, particularly where you'd mentioned in the beginning about um, when people are speaking to them, the advice that they're given, it will be taken literally. Yeah, yeah. 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 So if they're so told they can eat as much fruit and veg as they like, they will eat as much fruit and veg as they like. Exactly, exactly. So again, Lovely, thank you know, you. we need to be very careful around that. And if I was uh, supporting an individual a dietitian's uh, meeting or appointment and I was getting the gist that this dietitian had not got a clue about PWS I'd probably want to inform them of it beforehand I think sometimes we really do need to take the lead in these you know we may not be medical professionals but we have a lot of experience and especially family members you know your individual inside out you yeah. know yeah, so, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. I know sometimes we have advised parents as well, and, and sometimes settings we've advised. If you know you've got a dietitian's appointment coming up and they may not be very yeah. well practiced or experienced in PWS, just to send a little email just to say, could you be mindful yeah. of kind of what you're saying in front of the person with PWS? That's it. Yeah. So that you're not kind of you're not telling them how to do their job, but you're just making sure that the person's protected. Yeah, that's it. Lovely. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you very okay. much. So yeah, so we're looking at um, those age seven and over, and we, if we follow this guidance, we say between seven and nine calories per centimetre of height would be for the need to lose weight, and then between nine and 11 calories per centimetre of height for weight maintenance. So those individuals that seem to be at their goal weight and we don't want them to drop down any further because we do have individuals that have done so well in our services. They are, you know, having extra calories every day because of the need to maintain that weight and that so to keep them healthy. So, yeah, there's a lot of issues around dietitians and things like that, but try and make sure that they are prepared before they offer our individuals poor advice. So when we do increase daily, daily calorie intake to maintain or even increase weight in some circumstances, it's really important that um, it's achieved by causing the least distress to the individual as possible. You know, Tony mentioned food security and our guys really do need to know what they're eating, when they're eating and that everybody supporting them knows what they need. And if we are going to change their diet, 
even though they will receive more food if we're increasing, the change can be quite dramatic for our individuals. So what we want to avoid is giving too many calories at once and their weight increasing too dramatically. So resulting in the amounts being reduced again, which obviously can cause them major distress. So we need to increase those uh, calories very slowly, you know, starting with some extra calories for breakfast and so on until the weight has stabilized. So you may be at a point where you start for a couple of weeks, 100 extra calories at breakfast. So, you know, an extra piece of toast. We do that for a couple of weeks and see whether that maintains that weight. If it does, then we'll continue with that process. If it continues to drop, we will increase 100 calories at their um, midday meal and so on and forth, so forth. So it's all done very, very slowly. One thing I will say, though, is if you have an individual who is at um, target weight or below, leave it for a couple of weeks in their normal menu plan, just in case there's a medical issue that they've lost weight or something like that. OK, so it's just being very conscious of a slow process. So if the individual is healthy, and exercises regularly, then the carbohydrate part of the meal is what will increase, as stated on the, on the previous slide. However, we do have individuals, and it was good to um, hear that from Susan at the beginning of um, today's conference, that they're going to be doing a lot of research into the ageing PWS popularity, because, you know, thank the Lord, we are successfully supporting people into their old age. But we need to know a lot more about it. So those who have underlying health issues, poor mobility, maybe do not exercise regularly, the protein part of the meal should be increased. Carbohydrates are the fuel for the body. That's what we like to say. And proteins help heal the body. We try and keep this as basic as we can, like we say you know, because we have a lot of supporters that need to be aware of all these things. So if an individual continues to lose weight, it's important to say that we should seek medical advice as the weight loss, as I said before, could be a medical problem. And also, you know, advice to seek advice from a dietitian to ensure all nutritional areas of the individual's diet is, is um, suitable as well. And whenever we put, um, whenever we um, work out somebody's daily calorie intake in services, we like to have that agreed by their GP as well. So there is a medical professional that has, has agreed that that's appropriate. I'm now gonna pass over to my sister, Lisa, who's going to talk about some of the foods that have surprisingly high calories okay, okay. so if so, I just miss that again because that comes yeah. up yeah. so yes foods that are surprisingly high in calories and are sold to us mm -hmm. as being diet food or good for us and we have to be careful because these things are advertised as these our supported individuals our, our family members they will see these and think these are things that are going to be good for them um, cereal bars, they may seem dark friendly, but while whole grain varieties are high in uh, calorie count, high in, high in calorie count, mm -hmm. they release energy, vitamins and minerals, the sugars and fats used to flavour them can send the calorie count whizzing up. Um, I've picked up a couple of little sort of examples of these things. Um, the good old uh, morning oats cereal bar here um, is 294 calories, which is awful yeah. considering that is sold as a breakfast supplement, you know, a, an alternative to the good old breakfast. I would rather have a big bowl of cereal for that calories or a nice big bowl of uh, porridge. Nutrigrain here. This is another one, Nutrigrain. 
so it's nutritious it's it's selling it as nutritious for us 170 calories there and one of the things that uh, yeah this is sold as porridge porridge on the go 220 now you think that would take three mouthfuls to eat uh, whereas you could have a good bowl of steaming porridge in the mornings. You could have a bucket full, to be fair, for that amount of calories if it's made right. <laughs> so our top tip is opt for the naturally flavoured bars. There is, there is cereal bars out there that uh, are better and can be used if you're going out on an activity during the day. Um, but... Um, just watch the trans fats and the preservatives and the calorie count and include into your daily intake. Or, as Karina has put on the slide here, mm -hmm. make your own. Get, get the person involved in making their own food. Okay. Now, vitamin waters. They draw us in with their promises to energize and refresh us, but the majority are specifically fortified of the specially, specially fortified vitamin waters are also high in sugar and therefore pretty high in calories. Some, some as much as 300 calories per bottle. Yeah. Um, from previous conferences, we do think Volvic have listened. <laughs> and, um, they have reduced their calories in some of their bottles. You can get the sugar-free ones, but again, bottled water, flavoured water here, 75 calories. Now that's 75 calories, whereas a good old rosy apple is 71. I know what I would rather have. It may, and you get that nice feeling. It'll take you a while to munch through that. Mm -hmm. So, or just stick to the good old fashioned tap water. It's free. <laughs> okay. Now, salads. Salads, the thing that everybody on a diet knows about. Yeah. Um, they're good for us. They are low in calories. They are nutritious. We know all of these things. But there are leaves and vegetables in it, which means it must be the lowest item in calories on the menus, right? Well, wrong. The word salad doesn't automatically make everything dark friendly. It's what it contains that really counts. Be careful of those oily or creamy dressings. Fried croutons, things like fatty meats like bacon, lamb or beef that can be added. And it can cancel out all that nice lettuce that is low. Yeah. But there is a lot of things that you can add to a salad. Yeah. It just doesn't have to be cucumber, tomato, lettuce. It, you could got your nice coloured sliced peppers. Add some fruits to it. Bits of chopped apple. Um, bits of pomegranate seed, all these things make it colourful, it makes it appealing to the eye. And we know when we're eating something, the first thing we see is that, that it's what it looks like, it appeals to us. Yeah, low fat yogurts. Yeah, remember low fat doesn't automatically equal low calories. Many low fat things can be, um, while they're high in calcium and protein, are also packed full of sugar. And that makes them more higher in, in calories than regular yogurts. So just be careful. As Karina said earlier, check the labels, check the contents, check the calories. Yeah. Top tip, up for the natural flavour-free Greek yoghurt. Keep your portions small and if you need some sweetness, add yourself with a drizzle of honey, some fresh fruits. Beautiful. Fruit juices. <laughs> Fruit juices are a great vitamin-packed beverage but don't drink them just like water. Most 
especially those made with concentrates full of sugars that can send your blood sugars high, crashing, and the calorie count soars. And the same goes with smoothies, especially those made with yogurt or bananas. Top tip, one glass a day is enough to boost your vitamin count, but just stick to one glass, a 250 ml serving, remember to measure, is about 90 calories and go for the freshly pressed rather than those concentrates that have those hidden things in them. Dried fruit, again, something that is sold to us as being healthy and nutritious, and you can buy packets and stuff around now, can't you? They're high in fiber and nutrients. There is no doubting that dried fruits like apricots, pineapple, dates, raisins, and apple rings are good for you. However, calorie con control darters should munch with caution. A tablespoon serving is 97 calories, with a 100 gram snack bag over 300 calories, more if they are sugared or treated with honey. So what you think you're being healthy, again, a 100 gram bag, not that much really, it doesn't look that much, lots of calories out of your daily allowance. Top tip, sprinkle a spoonful over your cereal, but opt for fresh fruit like apples or oranges as a snack instead. Oh, this is <laughs> we. I hate that this is bad for you. Yes, <laughs> uh, and again, it's one of those social things. We go for a coffee, yeah, but all your drinks, especially your teas and your coffees, all those things have calories because you've got your milk. And if you're having several of them a day, I mean, my sister will sit here <laughs> and she can drink 12, 14 teas a day. <laughs> That's a lot of milk in yeah. it, and that is adding calories to your allowance, you know. So lattes, those lattes may see how, seem health harmless, mm. but whole milk, syrups and sugars catapult a low calorie coffee into the small mill counter territory. A regular whole milk latte from Starbucks is around 180 calories which is about the same as a pint of beer. <laughs> Top tip, if you can, do away with lattes completely. If not, turn it into a once or twice weekly treat, opt for the skinned or the soya milk and factor it into your daily intake. Right, well, thank you very much, Lisa. Let me get myself back into the shot. Yeah, um, thanks very much, Lisa. Again, always a bit of a shock. Um, and it's, you know, it's important when, like Lisa said, where they try and sell these products as if they're healthy and that, you know, nutritious and using that kind of terminology. But it's important that we still check. So we talked about vegetables and salads. When we're preparing menus, we don't actually count the calories of vegetables and salad items as we need to encourage the use of these because they're, they're obviously healthy. However, like Patsy mentioned earlier, we do still need to limit the amount. So it's important that we have portion guidelines for vegetables, salads, and things like that. Now, we must remember that some of our vegetables are actually carbohydrates. So things like potatoes, obviously sweet potatoes, they are classed as a, carb a carbohydrate and must be counted, so not a vegetable at all. But then there are some vegetables that are quite high in calories. So things like avocados, um, peas, sweet corn. So again, we need to limit the amount of them, but try not to get too, you know, hooked up about the calories in vegetables and salads and that it's important that they eat them. So without portion guidelines, the individual could receive more or less than the last time that meal was served, causing frustration. And this is all about consistency and it being the key. Our individuals need food security. They need food control in some areas. 
So locking away food areas, you know, um, making sure that if the kitchen is open, then certain cupboards or fridges or freezers have separate locks on them. <coughs> Excuse me. The emotional side of food security is when we make sure that they're fully aware every day what they're going to be eating. They know that they're going to get nothing different. So there's no anxiety there thinking, oh, can I get additional food from anywhere? No, it's what's written down. So they don't get disappointed. And, you know, those of us that have worked with individuals with PWS for many, many years cannot stress enough how important food security is and how that reduces their anxiety and their stress. So some of the things that we need to be aware of to provide food security and consistency is that all supporters of individuals, family members, carers, whichever way you, you want to put yourself, it's so important to have those portion sizes. And in our services, a few of the items that we use are key. So things like measuring spoons. So they get the same measure every time. Onto these bigger ones as well, these scoops for your flowers and your things and your pastas, and then a, a big one like that. You know, we need to consider fluids as well. So, you know, the old measuring drug with the fluids on it as well to support you. No doing it by eye. So the use of scales is extremely important. We must provide a consistent approach to menu planning. If Lisa was supporting an individual to cook his own meal one week and she did it by eye and thought, oh, this portion of pasta is suitable. I feel it's suitable. And then three weeks down the line, I do the same meal with that individual. Whereas I think his portion of pasta is, is decent, but it's a lot smaller. You can see where that conflict and that, that uh, frustration will, will come into play with our individuals. And that will also impact on the calories that a person is having. So by using measuring, you know how many calories there is for that amount of weight, yeah? If we were to pour a bowl of cereal, everybody's idea of a, a portion or a, around what you think is 35 grams would all be different and it would add those calories. So if somebody's weight is increasing, is everybody measuring and following those weight guidelines? Okay, so consistency is the key, okay? So when we look at menu planning, obviously home cooked food is, is the best way because we can control what calories, you know, we're putting into that. So prepared meals, things like Weight Watchers meals, Slimming World, supermarkets own healthy um, eating prepared meals are a lot better than what they used to be. And they could be a good option for those that have limited time. You know, if they're out all day doing activities, work placements, voluntary work, they may not have a lot of time to be able to prepare that food. So sometimes it's good to use these. Not all the time, though. We would always suggest home cooked food. The calories are recorded and they accompanied with vegetables can be added to, to that meal to make it a, a good sized meal. So some individuals can have prepared food sent to the person's home. For example, the Jane plan. It's a little bit expensive, but for some individuals, it's really important because they can control the amount of food that's coming in for them. So you tell them how many calories you're on a day and they will send you the food for that. So it, it's quite good and effective, but obviously a little bit expensive. So, for example, one of my favourites is the Weight Watchers Italian Chicken Lasagna, and it provides protein and carbohydrates. It has the calories on it, so it's 313 calories. So you can add your vegetables on or salad for free, which if you were looking at 500 calories for that total meal, would give you those 87 calories for that dessert.
So some tips then for, for menu planning. Fat-free does not mean sugar-free and vice versa. You know, if it's fat-free, it's got to have some component in it to hold it together, like those cereal bars. You know, why are they formed into a bar shape? If there's no fat in them, what's holding it all together and preventing it becoming a pile of crumbs on my hand? It's the sugar content and vice versa. Low sugar sometimes contains high amounts of fat. Another tip, usually cheaper canned, jarred, bottled food products contain less sugar and fat. You know, these ingredients cost more, so they are reduced in these products to keep them cheaper. So you could have, say, for example, a tin of chopped tomatoes. You could have the, you know, uh, top brand. And but against the Tesco's value, the sugar is dramatically lower. So, again, keep that in mind. And one of the also one of the things that we we say is is about sources. It's a real bugbear of mine because I'm diabetic, so you know sugar is an issue. It's a real bugbear of mine the amount of sugar that is in pre-prepared sources. Now we have to think of it like this: if a product is in a jar and it's sitting on the supermarket shelf for a good few months, it needs a preservative in it. To keep it fresh. That preservative is generally sugar. They do use salt, but again, that contains flavour. So it's generally sugar. So for example, Dolmio's bolognese sauce contained five tablespoons of sugar. There was a bit of an uproar with them a few years ago, so they have produced their own less sugar version. It's still a lot though. It's still a lot, yeah. So how can we do this? Let's make our own. It is so simple. If you want a pasta sauce, a tomato based pasta sauce, get loads of tomatoes, loads of peppers, chop up onions, put them all in the oven and that bake them right down, maybe drizzle a bit of oil over them. And then once it's all baked down, blend it all down, make those portion sizes, put them into separate freezer um containers and then you can keep them for the next time the same with things like curry sauces as well you can get low fat low sugar curry sauces so be a bit more you know sort of thinking about the food that that, that you're getting for your individual i think planning is such an important thing as well yeah planning ahead as Karina said about the security and then knowing what They've, they're going to have, if there's a menu that is, you know, they're involved in setting up, they know this is my meal the next day. The planning then, you can prepare the sources and, uh, you know, and be able to provide those nice home cooked meals, which are reduced in sugars and salts and all the other things that mm -hmm. add all those calories. Yeah. And just one of the final things is use sugar-free drinks. If it says no added sugar, it means it contains sugar, but not much. But it still can be quite surprising, okay? And obviously, that keeps the calorie content up as well. There is so much more in the way of variety around food these days, and there's a lot of great food out there. So it's important that we use variety, and, you know, remember with our, with our individuals and our people with PWS, this is going to be a lifelong thing for them. So we do not want boring menus that keep going round and round and round. Think about new products that are coming out. See if they're suitable for our individuals. And along with all of this comes the importance of exercise. You know, regular exercise should be part of uh, an individual's daily programs, really. And it's important for several reasons. One, it burns up that energy, those calories. It will improve muscle tone. And we know that that is um, lacking in individuals with PWS. Improve circulation. You know, obviously, if they're very heavy, it can have an effect on the way that their water circulates around their bodies. 
causing things like cellulitis edema. So the more they move, then obviously that, those risks are, are lessened. If they're doing an exercise program and they're enjoying it, it distracts from eating. And it also improves alertness, you know? And it's important for those that support individuals with PWS in exercise, that they join in as well and make it a fun thing. Absolutely. They don't want supporters standing on the sidelines, you know, just watching them. They want people to get involved with them as well. And it's very good. Exercise is very good for your mental health as well. We all yeah. know the benefits of walking, getting fresh air. And as Karina was saying about if you're in the social care setting, if you're a carer and you're supporting somebody with exercise, a lot of, our, uh, a lot of people with PWS are very competitive. <laughs> they like to win, yeah. you know, so make it into a fun activity. Yeah. And if you're a supporter, a family member or a carer, let them win. You know, <laughs> it's much better that way. So another one of the things with, with exercise is, is obviously the more exercise that they do, the more calories they can actually consume. So it's a bit of a win-win for them. Okay. Well, we've come to the end now of our presentation. And we'd just like to say a big thank you. It's it's really special that we're able to speak to people outside of our um, working environment and, you know, speak to people that, that are family members of people with PWS. So we hope what we've talked through with you and that helps a little bit of a way. And just to say to everybody, you know, keep up the good work and that, you know, supporting people with PWS is extremely beneficial. You know, over 23 years, I've enjoyed every minute of it, every minute. And I'm sure Lisa is the same. Definitely. And I hope to continue that way. <laughs> oh, um, bless you both. Oh, sorry, Lisa, did you want to say something? I'm sorry, I interrupted. No, I was just agreeing with Karina. You know, I'm 27 years coming up now. <laughs> and um, yeah, a pleasure every day. Either of you look old enough. <laughs> oh thank you it's, we've it's, got we've got screen thingies on us obviously we've got filters. Yeah, we're filters. screen thingies yeah. <laughs> thank screen you so thingies, yeah. Yeah. thank you so much both of you it was a real pleasure to get to listen to you actually because a lot of the time um when we're do, when we're doing conferences and stuff I'm usually yeah. off in the background doing different mm -hmm. things and I don't get the opportunity to listen to you and it's really really interesting yeah. and you bring up yeah. some really good points that are, they're so simple but until somebody else says them just really really simple things and really good points and right. um, we've already had a lovely comment um from uh, christopher in a residential setting saying excellent presentation thank you karina and lisa you did consensus proud oh, thank you very thank nice. you. um we've also got another comment that says thank you for a very useful discussion we do have a hand up so i will invite you in um in a moment and i can see I can see we've got an, a question in the um, box, which I'll ask first. So it's from Jeremy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone that can answer any questions about BioCult? Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm going to take that as a no. Well, <laughs> I only know because um, one of the ladies I support is on BioCult. Right. And uh, that was something that was recommended to her by Tony Goldstone. Yes. So, that's, that's about as much like, so yeah so actually Jeremy that's a good point it may be a question for um Tony Goldstein who will be coming up later yeah. Laura I'm going to come to you my love I'm going to invite you in to unmute yourself um, and to ask your question to Lisa and Karina oh no Do I, I can't need to stop sharing hold on let me stop sharing could. Laura my love because you're using a older version of zoom i can't actually allow you to come in and talk do you want to put your question into the <coughs> chat box and i'll make sure that i ask it. it not the chat box sorry the question and answer box katie would you like to come in and ask your question katie heel do you want to unmute yourself katie If you're there, okay, I see what, so 
anyone that's got any questions, can you please put them into the question and answer box? Because that's a much easier way of doing it. I'm very happy to invite you in to talk, but I do need you to be there to unmute yourself <laughs> and actually ask the question. Um, so, like I say, I found that really, really informative. You two are like a comedy act, honestly. <laughs> You'd have your own TV show. Yeah. Oh, pair of you. We, um, that, we, we, we still use some of the um there's information that we have from you and that you put together uh, quite a while ago that we still use and we send out to a number of residential settings that they find really, really useful. I think good. it is a really good point about the dietitians, like we'd already discussed. Yes. Um yeah. just making sure that they do have a bit of background, even if that background is be mindful of what you're saying in front of yeah. them um yeah and, and that things will be taken literally i found yeah. it really interesting as well about the ready meals because sometimes i can rely on them for my daughter yeah um yeah and and, and i will go for a weight watchers or a slimming world yeah thinking that's heavier and one of yeah. the things that um, healthier sorry and that's one of the things that i always find surprising is the amount of calories that are in the breakfast bars oh the cereal yeah. bars and these healthy yeah. I know I've tried before. Um, yeah. I mean, as far as, I'm, say, as far as I'm concerned, that's wasted calories. Yeah, yeah. yeah know, absolutely. I would rather have, and I know a lot of our individuals will always go for quantity rather yeah. than quality. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. 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 And the, the time it will take, I mean, as I said, one of these cereal bars, what, three mouthfuls, if you've got yeah. the size of mouth like I have, yeah. it's not. <laughs> Whereas if you've got a nice big bowl of porridge, it's going yep. to take you 15 minutes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And, yeah. and the point that, that what everyone thinks is a portion is different. Everyone's idea of a portion is different, right? Someone's put it in the chat box. Bear with me. Okay. Um, let me see if I can read this. Again, I will ask you all, please don't put questions in the chat box because it's not something that I'm keeping an eye on and I'm going to end up missing some. If you could put them in the question and answer box, that would be amazing. So this question is, my daughter has lots of wind and bloating. Is this normal for people with PWS? I'm currently trialling two weeks gluten-free as advised by the GP and then move on to two weeks lacto-free. Do you have any advice on diet to help this? We don't calorie count, but we go for healthy low fat, low sugar diet that's working for us at the moment? Well, firstly, I'd say if you're following a diet that's working for the individual, then stick with it. You know, we, we want to avoid changes, a lot of changes. We do have people with a lot of bloating and wind problems, but a lot of the time they eat very healthily. And unfortunately, some things like vegetables and things like that can cause you to have increased wind issues. But yeah, it's important that you get that checked out with your yeah. doctor because everybody with PWS is so different. You know, Definitely. they have all, yeah, the same as us. They have all different problems. You know, we know that certain foods can maybe, you know, upset our digestive systems and things like that. We all know that. But if whatever you're doing is working, you're seeking um, help from medical professionals for it, then, yeah, you know, good, good luck to you. Mm. I'll just say that some of the um, low fat, low sugary sort of items, there is certain certain things in them that can cause that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So hey. it may be that you need to sort of remove some things bear that in mind and see if that has any in impact um, yeah it's a process isn't it yes like yeah. a process of elimination yeah yeah which you seem to be doing yeah. you know and looking at those different options as well with medical advice which as Karina yeah. said is very important yeah. yeah so I hope that answers your question and good luck with it Lovely. thank you has anybody got any questions that they would like to come in with you can pop it into the question and answer box or if you'd like to share any of your experiences of um, diets that you found have worked for you or different things that you find are working for you or if you have any um what issues as such but if you should tell us about your experience with your young person in a residential setting what information you'd find useful we'll give them a couple of minutes to come in and ask yeah, some questions. Yeah. something as well just to um be aware of as well is looking on the internet for recipes there's lots yes. of different um, places that you can find um, them as well. There's blogs, there's slimming blogs, there's books out there. Yeah. You know, all different recipes. 
um, that give you that variety as well, you know, and um, it's important to change things around. Yeah, yeah, and, to, and in terms of kind of um, being colourful, because they're such visual people, aren't yeah. they? People, 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 oh, yeah. yes. but rather than it kind of being quite bland looking or plain looking, for it to be colourful and to be interesting, we're currently working on putting together some... Um, healthy recipes we've gone out to families and asked them what kind of mm -hmm. things that they use and again what works for them and what healthy ideas they have so that we can compile it and put together yeah. to put together some recipes so that we can um we can pass them on um yeah. i've just noted to stay a comment from julie richmond yes and she says as a tip for hot drinks like hot chocolates and lattes we have always allowed this for our daughter after a walk to the cafe which is about 2.5 miles away. Her weight has always been healthy. Yeah. Exactly. You know, when they do complete exercise, they've worn off those amount of calories so they can have those treats. So that's brilliant, Julie, yeah. And we do this with our individuals in residential care. If they go to a exercise activity, they generally have one of those um, low calorie chocolate drinks options, they call them. Yeah. when they get back from that so yeah and there's also slimming uh puppy soups and things yeah as well especially with the winter months coming up where they want a bit more warmth yeah definitely yeah. definitely it's it's all <coughs> excuse me it's all around what works for you as a family as well isn't it and what works for it is for individuals is. that are still at home and i appreciate yeah. that we have residential settings with us as well today yeah. and that yeah. um, obviously things can be different there but I think for some residential settings as well that maybe um don't have the same level of experience as you that sometimes that can be an area where they where they struggle that it is I think sometimes even as parents I think sometimes we can shy away from food altogether and so that we mm. won't talk about it we won't mention it and we won't kind of make a big deal of it mm. whereas if you kind of integrate it and you make it an occasion and yeah. and celebrate it and and allow them to enjoy it that can also change things as well definitely um, yeah but yeah definitely the point about having some exercise beforehand that you're yeah. running off so around the <clears throat> talking around that bit i don't know if you'll answer if you'll know the answer to this but is it right that the um people with pws have a slower metabolism so yeah, wouldn't necessarily yeah. really burn calories in the same way that's one of the reasons why they need less calories yeah mm -hmm. and they also because of the poor muscle tone they can also use a lot more energy than what we do to do normal right. things like walking and things like right, that. So okay. it's kind of like a bit double-edged. It's mm. like they can use more energy than what we do because of that poor muscle tone. But again, you know, their metabolism would be different from ours. Yeah. yeah. And maybe that's something that Tony will, um, you know, Tony Goldstone. Yeah, the Dr. Will, Goldstone will talk will, about this yeah, afternoon. Yeah. yeah about yeah. metabolism and things like that yeah yeah and i mean we just try patsy just just to keep it simple because mm. like i say we could have you know 12 staff working yeah. in a service and you know we need to make sure that those 12 staff are know all exactly following the same absolutely absolutely and it's no it's no different than in the family environment mm. you know we've all we've all had grandmas that oh it wouldn't hurt her you know, just giving them yeah. the sweets and things like that, yeah. you know, and that's fine for grandma and granddad to treat their grandchildren, obviously, but make it part of that calorie counting for the day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we do have some families that, you know, may struggle with siblings, you know, giving them extra food or not being so strict with them and things like that. So, yeah. so it's something that that's simple that everybody can follow. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I think you're right. Consistency is key. And one of the things for us yeah. as well is that if it's um, the, you know, one little bit won't hurt, it will if mm. everyone is giving yeah. one little bit. If yeah, every member it. of staff is thinking one little bit won't hurt, yeah, one little yeah, bit yeah. will most definitely hurt. That's and it. to and to make sure that we're mindful of the fact that menus that are in place and, and planning, meal planning that's in place yeah. are not, it's not a guide, it's not a suggestion. No, no, it's not a guideline. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's yeah, it's not a suggestion it's, for you to. No, if you, no. Well, we we could, we might not need to. No. So, ladies, thank you very, very much. Thank you for um, inviting have, us. You're welcome. I have got a um, question that I'm going to email on to you. Lovely, mm -hmm. no thank problem. You, thank you very, very much for your time. Thank you so much for joining us. I found it really, really informative, and I'm sure a lot of the people would have did as well. Yeah.